Hi everyone, welcome to the Colour Circle Studio. I'm up here this morning ready to take my final class for this term in pastels and I'm going to be talking about planning uh, out your painting and then a checklist you can use at the end to finish off your painting. So this is going to be going out to my Patreon team as well. So I've got it all set up here, I'm going to walk you through it and then it will be all ready when the students come so that we can talk through it and then they can have more time for painting. So. If you want to get a successful painting uh, and you want to check it at the end with the checklist I'm going to provide, then you need to have some idea of what it is you want to achieve. So you need to do a bit of planning. So on here I've got the photo reference I'm going to use for a beautiful mountain scene. I've then got a, a sheet of paper here with three, uh, two rectangles and a square drawn up. That's where I'm going to do my thumbnails and plan out whether, uh, which composition I think works. Over here I've got three little strips of paper with different colours that I'm going to be making a choice about the background colour to support what I want to achieve in the painting. So firstly I look at the painting and I think what is the mood I want to achieve? This has got a lovely sunny feel about it. You can imagine yourself out there for a walk in the and in the mountains, lovely crisp clean air, very bright and light and summery kind of feel is what I want for there. So bright, summery, that's going to be my mood that I want to achieve. So I need to make decisions about colours and the background colour and the colours that I'm going to use that will support that theme. The next thing I want to decide is how should I compose that. So first of all I'll decide on the format. Do I want it to stay in the format it is? And to do that I'm going to use the thumbnails and try it out. And after that I'm going to be wanting to know are there any elements I need to move. So I'll look at the composition and try and sort that out before I start. So up here, I just take a fine liner and I'm going to be sketching in the main shapes there. So I'm going to try this, this kind of shape. I'm not getting too worried at this stage about have I got those shapes exactly right. It's just more about will it work for me. So that's all the sharp trees coming along there up into that area. and. Well, I'm, when I'm doing the thumbnails, I'm also going to be thinking about... Whilst I'm doing the thumbnails, I'm also going to be thinking about the composition. So I can do two things at once. I know there's some more trees in the background there. That comes down and there's sort of the suggestion of a path coming through there. And there's some more of these. tree branches here, giving it a nice amount of height. So the first one's going to be fairly faithful to, I've got this big bush over here, I've got some small rocks here, some small bushes here and rocks. And then there's this big rock here. I'm just putting in some, some of the dark passages there so I can work out how my, my values might go as well. And that's That's, that's my first little thumbnail done <coughs> and while I'm doing that I'm thinking that rock is too central so I just repeat my rock over a bit to the side there. 
There's a real, really big feature in this painting, and I like the rock, but I didn't like where it was. So then I've got this bush. Do I put that in? Do I make it smaller? Do I move it over here? Do I have those rocks, that rocky sort of path coming in? I think what I'm going to do is put a small bush there. Same kind of thing with the red, and maybe a bigger one over here. Just move the corners of it. I'll put those spiky trees. And so at this point I could be asking myself, do I really want those dark black sort of dead trees in there? Will they support the idea that I'm trying to get? And they might because they're creating a really nice contrast against all that summery sky and the grasses. So in they go. And then, and then I'll make a path coming, coming sort of round like that to lead, lead me into the painting. So then I've got the decision which one do I like. I could also decide that actually what I want to do is just make it more of a square fat format there. Put the rock in over there again. Put up some of those trees. This is taking very long. I'm not spending a lot of time on it. And then I end up with three choices. So I've planned out the composition and what am I going to go for? I'm going to go. I actually quite like I actually quite like the square one there because it's focusing in on the mountain and the rock and not giving me too much out to the sides. So let's go with the square one. So now I've made a choice about composition. So I've done the mood, bright and sunny. I've done the format, which is going to be square. And I've looked at the composition and just moved the rock. The last thing I want to think about is um, the background colour, my base colour. And try and work out what will support that sunny mood that I'm going for. So I've put three strips of paper down here that are just scraps that I keep when I uh, cut down paper to size and then I can use them for planning. So I'm looking at the palette up there and that will be the last thing I'm going to choose my palette. I have a box of Terry Ludwig pastels, they're the Richard McKinley landscape set and I think they'll be perfect for this and it will help me to keep a restricted palette. Um, I could go into my big box of pastels and choose out the ones I want but I'm just going to use this for now to demonstrate what I'd be doing. So I'm, I'm looking, looking at the reference and I'm looking at my strips of paper and I'm just going to take out some of the colours. So I think this colour might represent some of that nice summery grass there. So I just go across put some of it on each of the colours. But then I'm thinking for some of the dark greens, I'll be using this kind of colour. So I'm putting that in, that'll, that'll be the, the shrubs up there. Uh, I'll be having a sky that's very pale. So I'm just putting in some sky colours there. And there'll be very pale colours for the, the snow, so in that goes. And some pale colours for the mountains back there, some sort of mauvey purpley colours, so just popping those in. And a bit fuller strength for the shadow side. There'll be greys down here for the, the rocks. 
McDonald's, I'm sure they did. So I'm getting an idea, I'm now getting an idea of what my colours are going to look like on the different um, pieces of paper and I can start to make a choice about what I think will work best. I'm actually going to pop in those very dark tree areas as well. And I could keep going testing these, putting in some more greens. But I think for I think for this one, the greens are the keys. The greens actually pop out against the red, and whilst at first you might not think that that red colour is a great colour for a mountain with lots of white and, and the blue sky, because I'm aiming for the bright summery feel, the little pop of red behind the green is going to give me a real hit of colour, and that's the one I'm going to go for. This one is going to give me a more cool wintry feel, which is not the, the look I'm after here. And this one sits somewhere in behind, be, between. It's a warm background and it could work, but I really want the pop of the red. So if you were trying this at home, you might decide that you preferred one or the other. So your mood might not be bright and summery, it might be a cool winter's day and you might prefer the cooler look. Or you might want something in between. You don't like the red popping through so much and you think that the, the warm yellow might be a better choice. But for me, it's going to be the red one. That's a very quick way to plan. Choose your subject. Think about the mood that you want to achieve. Then try some different formats and thumbnails so that you can work out whether there might be a better way than the one you're seeing there. Then you want to work on the composition as you're doing these. You want to think, are there any elements I could move to achieve a better composition? Think about your base colour. How is that going to support the mood that you want to achieve? And lastly, your palette. And I've chosen a box set of landscapes by Terry Ludden because they're already been chosen to harmonise. But if you didn't have a box set like that, you might want to go through your own pastels and choose the, the colours that you think are going to work and then try them on some of the scraps of paper. Next we'll be going on and doing the full painting. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.